All right, I'm back. This is Shay. So if you're going to the videos, please subscribe, help me out. So the video today is how to become an IT professional. So I did a video the other day on what does it actually take to become a DevOps engineer, cloud engineer, et cetera, and that it's just unrealistic to think that you can do it in three months. So, so excuse me. So one of the things that I wanted to really go over is what it actually takes to become an IT professional, right? Like if you want to actually go into IT, but many times people are not actually giving you the information of what you need to become an IT professional. They're not telling you what the job actually does. They're just sending you website links and not really explaining anything to you. So that's one of the things that I want to do right now is kind of go over what does it take to become a cloud engineer, network engineer, Linux engineer, and a DevOps engineer. So I've worked in all of these different roles, <laughs> unlike some folks that speak to these things, but they've never actually worked inside the job or struggled to take the certification exams. And bear with me, it's about 2.54 in the morning. And I just, I, I had to get this done, right? So I had to get the document done. I'm only putting it on, on the website for a dollar. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I mean, just... Just grab it, right? You know what I mean? If if you tell me, if you say, Shay, look, I don't even got a dollar, send it, send me a message inside the video and I'll put a discount thing on there and you get it for free. I don't care. I'm just trying to get all the information out there. To be honest, the dollar is just paying for access to this this website. <laughs> you know, so if you don't have it, hey, it's cool, it's fine. Just you know, message and say, hey, dude, I don't even got a dollar. All right, that's fine. I'll send it to you. So this is step by step of what you actually need to become a Linux system engineer, a network engineer, or a DevOps engineer or a cloud engineer. Some people will see the Google IT support and say, why does he have that on there? Well, when you're just coming into IT, like I used to be, you know, an EMT, right? As a combat medic. So when you're flipping over into IT from another field, whether you worked in construction, I used to work in construction. I, I mean, I know what it's like to be swinging sledgehammers, busting walls. And uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's so many different ways that people come into IT and they have no idea of anything. So for people that know nothing, honestly, that didn't exist back in 2007 when I got into IT, when I first come up, uh, came out of the Navy and had no clue what I was doing. I probably would have done a lot better um, and wouldn't have struggled so much and helped this job if I had some kind of foundational knowledge. So that's why I put it there for people that have no foundational knowledge whatsoever. It's actually really good if they actually, you know, do the course and not going and Googling the answers and cheating and stuff like that. So anyway, so let's take a look. Right. So you'll see right here. So store dot shades tech search dot IO. So it's there. Uh, this is the file right there. And it explains and I'm, I'm going to walk through what the file is right here. Right. Like I said, if you don't even have a dollar, just just comment inside the video and I'll give you a discount code to download it for free. Don't even worry about it. All right. So this is what I put together, right? How to become an IT professional. You know, what does the career field actually do? Cybersecurity. You like security stuff. You know, generally, what kind of job you're gonna you're gonna type, write, speak. You need to be able to speak well. You're relentless of figuring out why something's happening. I mean, you, you're hardcore into security and that's what you want to do, right? Uh, but depending on the type of cybersecurity professional you want to become, either you're going to be a hands-on person or you're going to be a fancy paper pusher driving everybody nuts. Do you have your POAM update? I, you need to close these vulnerabilities. All right, we'll, we'll get to it. You know, so it depends on what kind of cybersecurity person you want to be. Uh, a Linux system engineer. You like free stuff. <laughs> like me, I like free stuff. So uh, Linux system engineers, they work on every kind of server imaginable, uh, web servers. I mean, if you want to get into troubleshooting Android issues, I mean, if you really want to do that, they go for that. But a Linux system engineer is dealing with servers on a daily basis. You may have developers, like if you work in a research place or healthcare or or some kind of science-based organization, and they have Linux desktops. You know, you, you do have a lot of, Linux desktops out there for researchers and uh, maybe even data scientists and things like that. So you may be administering those also. Um, I have worked in organizations where the developers, you know, they have Linux laptops, especially the researchers or scientists. So you, 
may touch desktop, Linux desktops also, but you're generally going to be dealing with servers, server administration, standing up web servers, connecting through LDAP, things like that. Uh, cloud engineer. It, and so what I'm putting here basically is just kind of, you know, what's the general type of personality you may have in order to be kind of interested in this field? I fell in the cloud engineer in 2007, 2006, AWS started with S3, and then it became like a thing that nobody wanted to touch. So about, what, 2010, we were still doing a lot of VMware. Uh, 2012, when I went in the Department of Transportation, they were, you know, dipping their toes in the water of, of, of cloud technology. Brand brand new, very, very minimal. So nobody really wanted to deal with it. So I took the time to start learning it. And it's not like I was super smart and motivated. It was just something that no one else wanted to do. And I was bored. And I was like, well, let me, let me see if I can learn it, you know what I mean? And, and started to kind of go from there. So you know, it's not no grand story. It's just nobody wanted to be bothered with it, and I didn't mind. So I started learning it and ended up turning out to be this big thing later. So, yeah. All right, DevOps. Um, DevOps people are a different kind of breed. They really are. You know, you can straddle the fence of dev, uh, development, operations. You're going to work with security teams, leadership. You're designing different things. So, this, so I'm basically kind of going over... And you can go download it yourself and kind of look through what the scenarios I gave of the type of personality, the type of person that may be interested in this role. So one of the things I do break out <clears throat> is how do you want to work, right? Remote, hybrid, or on-site. So if you're able to manage your own time and not skimp out, sleep, and you can manage your time, I mean, genuinely manage your time, you know what time you got to join meetings, you know what time you have to... Uh, work on something. You can do your tickets, and you can you can keep up to date with everything. You can respond to people's call. If somebody randomly calls you from this thing, right? They randomly call you on on uh, Teams or or Slack or whatever, and you answer, right? You you answer the call. You're not you're not scared that they called you. <laughs> you know, I've been through that too. So um, you're responsive, right? So when I first started doing remote. Pfft, Man, you're disappearing. You let me go run this errand. I'm going to go get something to eat. And I'm going to go here. When I come back, you have some kind of excuse why you wasn't online. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, the internet's down. Oh, yeah, Comcast is out, baby. So let me let me let me get this stuff done right now. Verizon's not working. Oh, there's a network connection error. Oh, there's a problem with my VPN. <laughs> Trust me, I didn't try to every excuse. And most people that's remote when they first get started out, that's what they do. It was years ago. So I've learned. Um, over time, don't do that stuff. You know, all you're going to do is start getting a lot of attention to your manager, your director, or whoever the executive is. Oh, why is Shay not online? You know, what's going on? What you know, what's happening? You know, so it's better to just plan your day, and you see the list of meetings you need to attend. You you know what job tasks you have to work on. If you have a ticketing system and you're working through your tickets and get things done, you got. You know, you got your written notes of, of what you need to do. So, you know, you're actually working through things and getting things done. Then you can do remote, right? It's cool. You, you're fine. If you know for a fact, if somebody lets you off the leash, you're going to go buck wild. Don't put yourself in that situation. You might end up losing your job, right? Maybe hybrid is better for you. So, and, and I kind of go into, you know, <laughs> hybrid and if, if it's not, a, if you know it's not a good idea for you in your heart of hearts to work from home, don't put yourself in that kind of situation, right? If you know that you can handle it and it's just a couple days out of the week, but you really know that you really feel like you, you should be in the office just to kind of, you know, keep things moving along and, and you know, you know yourself then okay, then, then do hybrid. It's okay for you to take a position as hybrid because you know yourself. I mean, you have to be honest with yourself. Same thing with on-site. If you're an extrovert, you just have to have somebody around you. You got to talk to somebody. You got to see people. You know, I'm not from the extrovert faction. <laughs> you know? So I'm from the introvert faction. I've adapted to you people over time. But the thing is, if you know that you have to be around people and you need that rejuvenation of life by seeing another human being, then 
don't sign up for a remote because you're going to get on everybody's nerves because you're the kind of person that wants to keep pinging people on Teams and Slack and uh, Google Meet and stuff like that because you want to talk to somebody. You want to see that. You turn your camera on. I want to see you. So depending on the environment that you're in, if you have remote people and then you want to be on site, don't bug people of death just because you want to work in the office, right? So that's that's one of the other things you, you know yourself and know what you like and what you want but also understand that you need to adapt to the people around you that work with you don't be a nuisance right seriously don't be a nuisance now where do you want to work right western countries middle eastern countries is this you know african countries kenya nigeria uganda uh asia where you are located at will determine the type of technology certifications, et cetera, that you're actually going to focus on and actually learn. So, you know, kind of go over that a little bit. Um, what type of learning? Now, how do you get started? So what becoming an IT professional, you need to know what is your way of learning? Can you self-manage yourself? Are you able to kind of keep track? I mean, going into IT, one of the things I've learned over the years with taking my own certification training and and going and getting certified and things like that is I needed to have structure, right? So they got all these videos on YouTube, all these blogs and things like that. If you have structure, you're actually going to make sure that you get the stuff done, right? Um, that's that's the only way you can really make sure that you complete a task or complete a course is that there's structure to it. So if there's no structure to it and you're just randomly going over to Ricky Bobby's website and then, you know, uh, Holita's website and, and trying to find out what's going on, you know, you're never going to finish stuff. You're going to be cherry picking. It's going to be like a person with a, a basket of apples and biting each apple. <laughs> you're going to be bouncing from place to place. Right. So find a structured program. If you can self-manage, then, then it's okay to do something self-managed, whether it's Udemy, Cold Cloud, Coursera. I mean, if you're doing some Python stuff with Treehouse, as long as you have a structured environment and you can manage yourself, then okay, it's, it's, it's fine. If you know that you're not the kind of person that can manage your own time and manage your own learning processes, then maybe a boot camp is for you. Right. So and, you, and you're kind of scared, you're kind of nervous to do things on your own. All right. This is fine. If you got the money. Right. Do a boot camp. But I, I, I'll tell you this. Don't go into debt to get a job. And some people say, no, 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 it's fine. I went into debt and I got a job later. Blah, blah, blah. Well, it depends. It depends on what kind of debt. Right. So if you got a maxed out credit card and you're taking loans to go to school, I mean, and it would be cheaper for you to go to like a community college may take a little bit longer, but it's not burning your pockets apart. I mean, you have to like have common sense. Seriously, please, you know, use your head, especially if you have kids or you have a spouse. If you have a spouse and they can kind of offload the weight and they're working and they can help you out and you 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 both can work together and y'all can figure out the money, then OK, a boot camp may be the best option. But don't don't put yourself into financial hardship. I mean, like you are sitting there like, oh, they got oodles and noodles at safe at, at, at Aldi's. We're going to eat that. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, just kind of be realistic in what you're doing in your choices. Right. Um, but I'm real big on not going into debt to change careers, because when I changed careers, I was broke completely. I didn't even have the option of going to someone and asking for money. You know, it, it just wasn't it wasn't even an option for me available. And out of uh, my own pride, you know, I wouldn't even ask my mother for anything. I, I refused to ask anybody for anything. I started on my own and I started with what was free and what was freely available. And then, you know, I had a couple of employers and I changed over and went to act for healthcare and they started training me and they sent me to training and stuff like that. I just waited till I got a job that paid for the training. A um, little bit different now, you know, so, but still, you know, don't, don't sign up for something that you can't afford with a dream that you're going to make this money. Cause it may take a year. It, it may take a year before you get a job. You know, it may take longer, right? It, it could be fast. It could be six months. Well, it's not going to be six months. It, it could be like eight months, 10 months. It's, it's going to be a little bit of time. So that's what I'm saying. You know, don't spend what you don't have seriously. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So just watch out for the red flags to kind of go over that a little bit. And, 
colleges. So colleges and universities, you have to understand something. So colleges have a curriculum that is designed and they have a syllabus that is designed either that semester, the semester before. So they can't turn on a dime. So they're not going to be using the latest technologies most of the time. Um, I taught at UMUC years ago and the stuff that they had us teaching was just years behind. And I, and I remember going to the counselor, uh, uh, department chair, like this, this stuff is old. He's like, well, that's the syllabus and you have to teach to this. Well, 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 can I do that? No, you can't. So they have their hands tied of what they can teach many times. So think about that also, right? Because sometimes it may be better either doing a self-paced boot camp, which is modern and up-to-date and current, or a boot camp that's modern and up-to-date and current versus a college or a community college. Community colleges are fairly, really reasonable. Sometimes there's some community colleges, at least in the U.S., that have free tuition. So, you know, that may work. So just take a look, right? But also stick with your budget in which you can afford. All right. And another thing, do you have religious or more restrictions on where you can work, right? So for me, I can't work any place that they focus on gambling, they sell alcohol as their core product, uh, pork-based products, uh, adult entertainment, and uh, interest-based financing, things like that. So because of religious reasons, I can't work in them kind of locations or them kind of businesses. So if you have that or you have some kind of moral reason, okay, I, I'm, I'm a vegan and I don't believe in animal slaughter. So you don't want to work for like an animal slaughter uh, company. you know. So you have to think about that before you go into the company. So if you know you have these restrictions, right? Don't take a job there and then want to fight the people tooth and nail because they don't observe your religious. If you don't eat pork, don't take a job at a pork manufacturer, <laughs> right? Don't take a job at a slaughterhouse that's slaughtering pigs all day and you don't eat pork and you're saying it's your religious beliefs. I mean, just use common sense, right? Money's not everything, right? So think about what you're doing and where you're applying the jobs at when you're when you're ready to do that. Don't don't look for a fight going into a company or an organization or your political beliefs just because you don't like what they're doing. I mean, there's a lot of other jobs in the world. Just apply someplace else, right? Now, another thing, if you're going to study, you need a dedicated workspace. And that's something I, I personally learned over the years. You need a place that you can focus, that you can study, not a place where the kids are running around, making a whole bunch of noise. If you got a, a spouse, they're calling you every minute, asking for something. You're trying to study something. You're trying to focus. They keep calling you. Oh, just real quick. Come over here real quick. Or, or well, you, can, you, can you cut this up real quick? They want you to come in the kitchen to help them. Or, or, or can you take the clothes and put them in the laundry? You know, just... All of these distractions, you need a dedicated workspace where you can work and not have a whole bunch of distractions. If you can't and don't have that, then go to your local coffee shop or your local eatery, someplace out of the house where you can actually do that, right? Depending on what country you're in, you may or may not have that ability, but there's always the opportunity to go someplace else and study if you cannot do it inside your house or the location you're in is not good to study. Right. Um, don't sit on social media. Right. So if you're focusing on studying, don't be sitting there doing this. Oh, oh, OK. I mean, how are you going to focus on what you're doing and you're constantly checking the phone? Either turn this thing off. Trust me, you won't die. You will not die if you turn this thing off. Right. Turn it off or mute the messages or, or do something, turn the sound off something and put it, put it away from you. Put it where it's not in your hands area away from you so that you can focus on what you're trying to do. Right. Um, communicate to family and friends, you know, that you need dedicated time to focus, et cetera, and then go from there. All right. Now, this is kind of getting into what I was saying about a structure explaining what to do, you know, what plan can you follow to actually become this engineer you want to become, right? So I got here as a start and I, I covered the cybersecurity engineer, Linux engineer, uh, DevOps engineer, cloud engineer, and network engineer. I didn't focus on anything I've never done before. So I'm not going to waste time talking about things I know nothing about, right? So the Google IT support certificate, I kind of covered that earlier. 
if you don't know anything, it's, it's good, right? Security Blue. So everything I put here is focused on hands-on of actually doing actual work, not just being a fancy paper pusher who's directing other people. You know, uh, I'm a CISP, you need to do this. You know, so you don't need a CISSP to get a job. You don't need a Security Plus to get a job unless you're getting a government job and they require it to actually have that. And many times they'll give you six months or a time frame to get the Security Plus or to get your certification. CISP is if you're going into management. Um, so they'll give you time, right? You don't need to always have it up front, but you need to have something, right? You need to have some kind of uh, background in that skill. And to be honest, I worked in cybersecurity and didn't have any certifications, right? But I had hands on. I had been working with the different teams for years. So it just depends on the opportunity, what's available, how you talk and speak and the knowledge that you have. But if you're coming cold from the street, you want to have some kind of certification to, to demonstrate why you should get hired, right? So that's why I put here the pro tip. You don't need a degree, CISSP, GIAC, which is expensive, really expensive, um, CAH to get a job as, uh, as a cybersecurity analyst. I kind of explain that vendor certifications like CrowdStrike, Splunk, um, CyberArk, Many times that's organization specific of they if they use them technologies or not. So don't just go out randomly taking certifications that or training that you may or may not use it. Right. Only focus on stuff that's actually being used. Now, for U.S. government security positions, they generally are going to require, uh, you know, CompTIA Security Plus as a, as a minimum basic uh, entry level kind of uh, certification. So but like I said, most times they'll give you time to actually get the certification. They don't expect, most places I've worked, don't expect you to have everything coming in the door, unless it's like a management role. You know, like they want you to be an information system security officer or, or information system security manager, then they expect you to have certain amount of certifications coming in the door, right? Now, a biggie. And, and I'm only gonna talk for a few more minutes and then shut it down, it's late, go get some sleep. Uh, I'm off of work tomorrow, so it's cool. So. Certification fraud. Do not pay somebody for your certification. I see people all the time. I can't, you know, I've blocked so many people in LinkedIn from India and Philippines and China and, and different places where they're saying, hey, we can, we can, we can, if you pay this money, you can get this certification in 30 days, blah, 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 blah. Listen, the whole purpose of getting a certification is so that you can learn what the technology does and do the work. It's just, it's not just the paper. The paper is just a validator. It's just a validator. So some people say, well, I've got the experience, but why should I take, there's things you're going to learn, man or woman, in that certification training that you may not have learned doing the job. So take the time to study and take your own exam. Stop trying to cut corners and get somebody to pay for the exam for you because you, you don't want to take the exam or you're scared or you're bad test taker. I'm a bad test taker sometimes. I have to study four or five times harder than some people because I need to understand what I'm reading, right? Um, I can memorize large amounts of information extremely quickly but it's just the multiple choice. I hate multiple choice exams. I really do. But performance-based exams, rock straight through them. But, but multiple choice, oh boy. I'd, I'd rather fight Mike Tyson with one hand behind my back, toothless and blind in his prime than to take multiple choice exams. Tonight. But you know, what can you do? You have to take them. So, you know, it's unavoidable. So you just take them. So just do it on your own. Don't pay somebody to take a certification exam for you, please. And if you get caught, you're gonna get fired. And depending on where you work, you might get sued, you know what I mean? Or, or it could be a criminal offense. So be careful, right? Don't, don't do it. Uh, hands-on. So I explained, you know, the kind of hands-on that you need. Um, so work life, this is like work life, you know, hands-on will always be helpful and will expedite completion of job tasks by 50 to 75% of your time will be spent on running scans, <laughs> uh, completing reports, sitting in meetings, discussing poems, vulnerabilities, when something is getting remediated by the team, et cetera. So I explain work life. This, I have not seen that out there. 
nobody explains this. Nobody tells you, what are you going to do every single day? Maybe you can watch video, but no one is breaking out, you know, job titles, work life, um, all these little nuances that those of us that work in the field know, but no one kind of explains it to anybody coming in. So I, I, I explained it out. Right. So that's cybersecurity engineer. Then I have Linux system engineer. The certifications, pro tip, work life, job opportunities, job titles, right? So same thing, cloud engineer, Amazon Web Services. I break it down step by step. If you want to if you want to take this list, download it and and literally follow step by step, then you can do that. You can follow it step by step. No problem, right? So it goes down to the pro tips monitoring tools work life same thing step by step right same thing with google cloud platform same thing as a devops engineer and i didn't put down job titles obviously because it's, it's a cloud engineer it's a devops engineer it's a network engineer so i don't need to put titles in the bottom because it's pretty uniform right um the type of certifications that you need step by step technical fundamentals networking fundamentals linux basics the linux oh you will not ever see me speak about LPI. I guess a great organization, but let me tell you something. If there's no way to verify, you've touched the keyboard to do anything, right? And this goes back to my dislike of multiple choice. So LFCS is a performance-based exam. Same thing with Red Hat is a performance-based exam. That means that you have put your hands on the keyboard and done actual work, right? So you're going to touch Linux on a daily basis to some extent and some level. Absolutely, you're going to touch it in the Amazon environment or Google Cloud environment. So you need to have hands on. So that's why I say, from my own experience, get the LFCS exam, uh, certification or the Red Hat if you're a Red Hat shop, a Red Hat Certified Systems Administrator certification, um, because it's important, right? You have to know Linux. You have to. You have to. All right, so kind of breaking it down, Git, Terraform, Ansible, Jenkins, uh, Python. As an Amazon DevOps engineer, I've dealt with Python, mostly JavaScript, troubleshooting issues with JavaScript, uh, Node.js, things like that. So, you know, it's, you don't need to be like a Python developer, right? You need to know how to troubleshoot issues. You need to know how to fix problems, right? You're not a developer. You just need to know how to fix stuff when they break it or do something silly right docker and and then i go into the pro tip work life same thing with uh devops engineer so it's kind of all broken out and then down on to the network engineer um uh, so for a network engineer most people are like well, you don't need google IT support for a network engineer well like i said it kind of goes back to knowing nothing right so if you don't tinker with laptops You've never touched a networking device, a router, or a switch, and you've never done anything to replace the hardware on your laptop, and you just have no knowledge of anything. Like I said, that's where Google IT support comes in because you don't know anything, right? So that's where it's good. And then immediately, CCNA. Jump straight into the CCNA. But one of the biggest things I'll say with anybody with CCNA, you need hardware, right? So get you some, get an actual router and actual switch to learn on, not just this virtual stuff, get the actual, you know, get an actual Cisco catalyst, get an actual router, get an actual switch and learn on the actual equipment. They got, the, if you, you know, Western countries, they're all over eBay, Amazon, um, whatever you can find for Europe, Asia, you know, wherever you can, especially in Africa, you have to, you know, where you can go to get the hardware and parts and stuff like that and actually start learning. So if you're in Africa or Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, then it may be a little bit more challenging because you have to find somebody that you can buy it from. And it, if it's used hardware, it's probably not going to cost you that much. You know, you negotiate and, and get the hardware. Same thing with Asia. You know, you can order the hardware, but it depends on what you're going to be using. If it's not Cisco, maybe Huawei, you know, or Juniper or whatever. So but get hardware, get actual hardware to learn uh, uh, Cisco stuff. And like I said, it's location specific. So depending on the location, I mean, you might, it might be Huawei, it might be Juniper. So just focus on the tech for the location you're in. But if you're in a Western country or you're in Africa or the Middle East, you're usually going to see a lot of Cisco, right? Um, so the firewall stuff, and I go into the pro tip again, 
Now, the thing that the reason why you see the AWS certifications there and Google Cloud certifications for a network engineer is because you're going to touch cloud eventually, right? So if you want to really be like high speed, super valuable, you have those search, then it's it's that extra notch on your belt. Now, the AWS certified advanced networking exam is tough, very hard. Now, I, I didn't look at the requirements to see if you had to have the associate before you take that exam, but you really want to have associate level knowledge before you go for that exam. Um, but it's not required. You know, you can you can go straight in with your networking knowledge, but you really need to understand AWS deeply. And the same thing with Google Cloud. You have to understand Google Cloud deeply to take these exams. And, and that's why I put it there, because <clears throat> nowadays you're going to touch cloud and deal with cloud at some level unless you get that one company that has no cloud whatsoever, uh, which is out there. It is out there. But for the most part, you're going to deal with some kind of cloud technologies. And, and I'm not putting Azure, no love. So <laughs> for, for now, anyway, so pro tip, I put that there. Vendor certification, I kind of, you know, went into the uh, firewalls. F5, Palo Alto, I got Palo Alto there. I got um, Meraki, Fortinet, SonicWall, Check, Checkpoint, et cetera. That's company location specific. So you don't want to just be randomly learning stuff if you don't use it. So just, you know, focus on what you're going to use. Same thing, government position. So anyway, so this document is a step-by-step -step how to become an IT professional with tips of the kind of work you do with, with some background and the kind of personality you, you have to anticipate to want to do that kind of job. And I hope it helps, right? I hope it helps anybody that needs it. And it should shine a little bit of light on the kind of things to expect when you want to do this job and you want to work in IT and hopefully remove some fear of, of what you're about to go into and some doubt or some concerns. And it's, it's helpful. Like I said, I just posted it for a dollar, bare minimum. If you don't have a dollar, seriously, just put a post in the comment and I'll give you a discount code to make it free for you. It's no problem. Right? So I wish you the best. Uh, please subscribe if you if you have found some value. I'm going to be trying to post more of these videos to help people get into IT and uh, later on be troubleshooting some Linux stuff and and getting into certifications and you know how to pass and things like that and kind of go step by step of what to do learning Linux and learning Cisco and and you know kind of deep dive into the tech stuff. Uh, that's going to take a little time. So yeah, subscribe, like, sh please share, and also. Have a good night. For all the Muslims, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. For everybody else, peace, love, take care of yourself. I wish you the best.